Maria del Refugio was born in San Miguel de Allende, a city in Mexico, in 1866. She was part of an upper-class family and had seven younger siblings. Now, in those days, women typically did not go to school or get any sort of degrees. They were simply taught at home, and they learned how to read, write, and speak other languages. Maria del Refugio was no different. Marriages were often arranged, and for Maria del Refugio, her future husband was presented to her by her father. His name was Angel Cancino, a 36-year-old widower. For Maria del Refugio, who was just 20 at the time, hearing that she would be marrying him was quite a shock. She was not excited about the match, but she was obedient to her father. She determined that this was part of God's will for her, and she would put her whole heart into it. So on November 4th, 1886, they got married. She did eventually fall in love with Angel. She was devoted to being a good wife, and since she saw him as part of God's will for her, she was determined to support and follow him anywhere he went. A year after they were married, their son Angel was born, and in the following year, they had a daughter named Maria Teresa. Everything seemed to be going well, and Maria del Refugio saw a promising future for her family where they would be well provided for, both spiritually and materially. In 1888, just after the birth of their daughter, Angel, Maria's husband, was given a position that sent him and his family to Toluca. Angel was a tax collector with political interests during a period of great unrest in Mexico. As a result, Maria del Refugio got to know a lot of politicians at the time. Unexpectedly, they had a very harsh winter that year, and her husband died of pneumonia. Maria del Refugio had left her home and family to be joined to her husband, but she could not follow him where he was going this time. Once he was gone, she looked at the faces of her children and knew that she had to keep going for them. She was confident in God's protection, and so as a young widow and mother of two, she gathered her things and returned to her family's home, not knowing what awaited her, but trusting in the Lord's providence. I think it's very significant that our mother foundress was married before she started her religious institute because she learned about what spousal love was through her marriage with Angel. And she received so many blessings through that marriage and gave so many blessings through that marriage and all of that translated into her religious life. She learned what it was to be a wife and a mother in a very real way. And all of us as religious are called to be wives and mothers, even if we're not married to someone else before we find Jesus, or rather allow him to find us. But she had that great blessing of knowing a man in that way and being loved by him in return. And so when she knew that Jesus was calling her to be exclusively his, she knew what it meant to give of herself and to lay down her life for the one that she loved. 